Hello everyone, during the Lunar New Year holiday, I was rowing hard as the tide came in, and just when I thought I could stop, something incredible came up that I had to explain to you, so here I am making this video. Due to the impact of DeepSync, there have been numerous discussions and I've uploaded 7 videos from various perspectives, but the most crucial point is this, using less computing power can still result in excellent performance. Secondly, the open ecosystem allows gradual expansion with these models. The first point is that we no longer need many performance indicators, or the need for computing power is being continually questioned. In this context, DeepSync version 3 released last month comes into play. This time, let's dive into the base model that serves as the foundation for R1, which I've been emphasizing. This fundamental model, referred to as V3, utilizes FP8, meaning it employs 8-bit floating point numbers to achieve significant optimization. However, Microsoft has published a paper showing that similar results can be achieved using FP4. However, now it's been demonstrated that it can be done with FP4 instead of FP8. Not only China's DeepSync, but even Microsoft's research in the US shows that training can now be done at much lower costs and with smaller precision. Let me briefly explain the background and how powerful these results are, as well as potential future trends. Additionally, this raises the question of whether NVIDIA's GPUs will be used significantly less, or you'll use it much more effectively. Let me explain this further. First off, the DeepSync version 3 technical report, which I've showcased numerous times in my earlier videos, was published on December 27th of last year. This document serves as the base model that came before the highly discussed R1 model. By looking at figure 6 in this report, you can find some revealing hints and insights. Looking at this, it might seem confusing. Some inputs go to BF16, others to FP8-16, and sometimes to 32 before changing back to FP8. This is complex, so let's understand the meaning of 8 and 16. This is about quantization, as I mentioned before. The Juliet Tech blog discusses it. When we represent numbers like pi, it goes on as 3.141592653589979. In order to represent these values accurately, the container for these numbers must be highly detailed. For instance, when discussing LRM, it has 175 billion parameters. The DeepSync R1 model, utilizing the MOE architecture, boasts over 600 billion parameters. Essentially, these parameters are numbers that require precise representation. To achieve precise computations, especially when processing text inputs, it is crucial to use high precision formats. For instance, representing numbers with 32-bit or 16-bit formats allows for detailed calculations down to the decimal level. Specifically, utilizing a 16-bit format means handling numbers up to 2 raised to the 16th power. Numbers can be represented in various formats. For example, here we have a 3-bit representation divided into 8 segments. Initially, these numbers were highly precise, but now they are simplified into 8 units using just 3 bits. If we use 16 bits, the representation would be much finer, but it would also require significantly more HBM memory. This needs a lot of memory. It also requires extensive calculation logic, so reducing it is crucial. When discussing signal processing, everything is interconnected. Remember the old 8-bit and 16-bit game consoles? The difference in data capacity, whether it was 8-bit or 16-bit, directly affected the quality. Most tasks related to signal processing, including their hardware or IP implementations, involve quantization, which is fundamental to engineering. Regarding this, many things are being widely applied. Quantization itself isn't unique to large language models, but its implementation here is remarkable. Simply put, it's about approximation. By approximating, we can use less memory capacity, streamline the model, and run larger models. This is the current trend. When you look at the specifications for NVIDIA's H100, you'll see references to formats like FP64, FP8, and INT8. FP64 can handle 34 teraflops per second, reducing from 64 to 32 doubles the performance, and from 32 to 16, it increases even more significantly, going down to 8 doubles it yet again. Do you see the pattern here? The system has been designed to enhance computational capabilities by reducing the bit count used to represent each number. According to AI engineers, using around 16 bits generally provides accurate results, while 8 bits can still deliver good performance in many scenarios. While it's acceptable to represent a number using 8 bits, reducing it to 4 bits was widely considered impractical due to severe performance issues. Many experts strongly believed it was impossible. However, Microsoft has recently developed an innovative and highly efficient method to use 4-bit representation, achieving impressive results at a very low cost. They have presented a groundbreaking paper that highlights how training can be accomplished at an impressively low cost. So, let's revisit the DeepSync paper once more. Here, in this illustration, they utilize a mix of 16-bit and 8-bit formats, employing a technique known as mixed precision, which entails dynamically adjusting between various levels of precision. They optimize it a lot to make it more efficient. DeepSync likely received limited NVIDIA GPUs, right? Despite various rumors about smuggling, the strict constraints necessitated making the model as efficient as possible. Training AI models demands substantial computational power. In this scenario, it's vital to balance the precision of stored values by incorporating not just FP32, but also integrating formats like FP16 and FP8. This method enables computations using 8-bit precision, which may not be as accurate as 16-bit or 32-bit precision. However, by utilizing FP8, training speed can be significantly increased while maintaining a reasonable level of accuracy. This approach is suggested to enhance training efficiency without a substantial loss in precision. In some cases, FP8 is used, but tasks needing higher precision use 32-bit or 16-bit formats. This ensures critical computations are accurate, while less critical ones are processed faster with FP8. 
This approach isn't exclusive to DeepSync. Many AI engineers have explored similar strategies, and DeepSync has implemented this one. They mentioned employing a particular method of combination. Essentially, by reducing bit precision, they aim to utilize the hardware more efficiently. Consequently, they manage to process it effectively using the FP8 data format. Take a closer look. FP8 is implemented here. However, when it comes to combining, they opt for FP31. For instance, we imagine the range is minus 100 to 100. But 90 plus 90 is 180. We can't show 180 with a negative 100 to 100. So you can only represent it as 100. Even with FP8, you need to increase the bit count slightly. This allows expressing values from minus 10,000 to plus 10,000. You sum it up and convert it back to a higher bit depth. This process is essential. It's not an innovative method unique to DeepSync. Any engineer can use this 8-bit precision. It plays a role in correction when using condensation. But what DeepSync has shown is that by combining it well, it can represent something equivalent to the base model of OpenAI's Frontier model, O1. However, we also need to look at the paper Microsoft recently released. This research paper demonstrates that utilizing FP4 quantization can be highly effective even when applied in a horizontal manner. Basically, a tremendous amount of computation and cost is required, so FP16 and FP8 have been widely used. However, many were skeptical about using FP4, saying it was extremely difficult to train with it. But it has been shown to be possible. In fact, people said that AI was impossible three or four years ago, but the world is changing really fast. Therefore, I personally believe that it's important to be cautious when claiming that certain technological advancements are impossible. This particular paper represents a significant breakthrough, showing that FP4 can be utilized effectively while maintaining high accuracy during training, despite previous skepticism about its feasibility. Using FP4 alone can lead to instability, much like the green line that indicates a loss. You can see that the loss significantly decreases and it follows the trend very well, right? It closely follows the BF16 baseline. Microsoft discovered this method. So, if you look at figure 2, FP4 is shown like this. It starts from 0 and ranges from negative 6 to 6, using only 4 bits. This is represented from 1111 to 0000, 000, 000 corresponding to 2 to the power of 4. Using a quantization function, we can convert it to FP4. Originally, it was in BF16. They utilize FP4 tensor cores to adjust the outcomes of these computations, employing a technique that involves the application of FP4 operations specifically to matrix multiplication, or GMM, in an attempt to preserve accuracy. When you examine figure 3, you'll find a method called DGE, which stands for Differentiable Gradient Estimator. So, by following the direction in which the model is being trained and adjusting the gradients to correct the direction, it can be interpreted as being able to follow more accurately than just cutting it off harshly. This way, it's possible even with FP4, it can be sufficiently expressed. But they didn't just use this one method, if you look at figure 4. To tackle areas where loss occurs, we utilize a method called Outlier Clamping and Compensation, OCC. This technique is effective in managing outliers by filtering out extremely large values, smoothing them, and making necessary adjustments. By combining these two strategies, we can appropriately adjust significantly deviating numbers, even when using lower bit precision. It effectively captures the average values despite the presence of some outliers. Consequently, after testing models with 1.3 billion, 7 billion, and 13 billion parameters, we observed that the results were quite satisfactory. To summarize, FP8 was previously the minimum bit width that could be utilized, and DeepSync employed this to reduce costs. Now, it has been proven experimentally for the first time that FP4 can be used. To avoid inaccuracies, they used a DGE method with gradients and a numerical correction to remove outliers. So, in the future, FP4 will be used. The question is, what impact will this have on NVIDIA GPUs? Let's take a quick look at NVIDIA's recent GTC video. When they showed the graph and claimed Black L could reach 20,000 teraflops, it was hard to ignore. Switching from FP8 to FP4 and claiming 20,000 teraflops drew a lot of criticism. People said, FP8 is already hard to believe, so why bring FP4 into this mess? Isn't this a bit of a scam? The benchmarks are different. If we use the same criteria as FP16 or FP8, the results would be lower, but by exceeding these, some claim it's akin to Moore's Law. While this might seem a bit overstated, it's worth noting that while FP8 was supported by Hopper, Blackwell now supports FP4 as well. Initially, AI engineers thought FP4 would be quite difficult. Microsoft is now saying that FP4 is also feasible, which means Jensen Huang of NVIDIA was right. There have been continuous demands, and looking at the overall trend, it's clear that hardware needs to support this in advance. This means that it's not just about using it for low-cost applications and running GPUs cheaply, but also achieving much higher teraflops. From the perspective of faster processing, NVIDIA GPUs or AMD Instinct MI355X platforms, which support FP4, are increasingly viable. The fact that FP4, a 4-bit format, is already supported indicates that hardware manufacturers need to be prepared in advance, predicting that FP4 will become a standard trend. We had been preparing for this in advance. Those involved in AI architecture and algorithm development faced hurdles, but Microsoft has now addressed them. The trend towards low-cost acceleration is undeniable. The demand for supporting hardware will rise. This perspective allows us to focus on more aspects.